Y'all know him as Derrick Rose. Others know him as the Windy City Assassin. And others know him as Poudin. And I call him Chiraki. Why? Don't worry about it, nigga. <laughs> but Derrick Rose just recently said in an interview that to his people in his hometown of Inglewood, Illinois, and the people of Chicago, he's a Hall of Famer. In the eyes of his locals, his peers, the people he grew up with, he made it. He's a Hall of Famer. And I'm here to tell you that in the eyes of me, a fan of not only Derrick Rose, but a fan of hoops, a historian in my own uh, in my own eyes of the game Derrick Rose is a Hall of Famer by any merit if we're only going off meritocracy Derrick Rose deserves to be in them halls already and he ain't even done yet and my evidence or my argument for one before I even get to my argument let me say the argument that will oppose him being in the Hall of Fame. For one, he wasn't the same after he got hurt. That's an argument, believe it or not. So you have four years of quality production. So that's already four good years. And then you have a couple good years after the injury. So the argument to say he wasn't as good as he was, that doesn't, to me, that doesn't, Nullify the fact that he still was a productive NBA player post-injury. Just because he wasn't the number one best player in the league or arguably the MVP status in the league doesn't mean he didn't do his shit. That's an argument. And an argument that the higher-ups are going to use when it's time is his image. The alleged, keyword alleged, rape case. And then you have his non-compliance. This has to be noted. Because when you don't do what they tell you to do as a player, as livestock, essentially. Because there's owners and there's livestock. If you don't do what the owners, the owners say, your perception will be tainted. Derrick Rose, once he got injured, decided to not play as early as he could have played. He had a chance to play in the playoffs and he didn't. And even as a fan, I looked like... Damn, my nigga, I play. Why you ain't playing? But in hindsight, I got a little more knowledge. I got a little more empathetic for my subjects that I'm watching. I realize they're human. Taking a break was the most logical move for Derrick Rose, in my opinion, because his sustainability would have been jeopardized if he came back fast. He said he talked to Wade. Wade came back fast. You seen how Wade needs ended up dying on him. So you have that argument that he um, didn't comply and he's not essentially tough because Charles Barkley ridiculed him and a plethora of analytic people said he was washed or not not uh, good anymore, a hundredth best player in the league type shit. All the naysayers, and mind you, Derrick Rose hears all this shit. Something harping on his brain while he's going through rehab, trying to reconfigure and get back to his level of play. So, perseverance through that aspect alone shows you that this is a good example to show to a kid trying to play or somebody battling injury, somebody going through some hardship that you can succeed even though you're battle-tested. Even though you've been tried. So those are just a couple of arguments that will say he's not. I'm going to tell you my argument why he is. For one, let's go through the career. Rookie season. Or college, you went to the uh, finals and lost. But you were still first pick of the NBA draft. So that's something to be noted. Then you get rookie of the year. That's something to be noted. Then your first playoff game, you score about 30. 234. I don't know how many you score, but you have the most points ever for a first time playoff performer, rookie playoff performer. That's to be noted. You took on the champion Celtics in your first 
rookie playoff series. Took them to seven. You and Ben Gordon down there alone. Legendary series. So you're a playoff performer. That should be noted. Out the gate. Second year, you expand your game. 22-23 a game. I think you were up for comeback player of the year or most improved. I think. I'm not sure. But that should be noted because now you're on the star spectrum. Third year, you win MVP. <laughs> you go all out. You have one of the best seasons to this to this day. To this day. Youngest MVP ever. That should be noted. Fourth year, you have just as good a year. Lead the Chicago Bulls to the first seed for back-to-back years. And you are, you guys are the favorite to win the championship. You get hurt. Damn. Set one of the saddest moments of my fan career of watching these niggas. But you get hurt, and that's where all the ridicule and the scrutiny that I talked about earlier comes from. People saying he's washed. People saying he's not tough. His integrity being questioned. So, okay, I come back now. I do the Olympic thing. I think we win the preliminary Olympic shit. Then I have my season. 17, 18 points per game. Lead us to the playoffs with Jimmy. And I have another great playoffs against the Bucks and against the Cavs, LeBron's Cavs. I think it was 2015 or 16 where he hit the game winner and had to still face on the niggas. That should be noted as coming back and performing at a high level post-ACL, numerous ACL injuries, should be noted. Then, you have another season with the Bulls, your mass season. So you start off with half a face. Doesn't have that much of a great season. Has a good second half of the season. Doesn't make the playoffs, so that's not something to leverage his case. But then we fast forward. You get traded to the Knicks. People think you're washed. So your contract is low. The whole media and fan outlet is saying Derrick Rose is a has-been. I lived through it. So you can't argue. You can, but we could check the files. When he does a good move up and under, dunks, when he blows by a nigga, I say that's the old Derrick Rose. I say that's Derrick Rose that I'm watching now. That's the difference. They keep referencing out their mouth that he's washed. So the language steers the narrative to where everybody thinks he's washed. Okay, so you depart from the Knicks, you get traded to the Cavs, you get hurt again. Probably the worst aspect of his career. He gets hurt on the Cavs before playing 15 games type shit. Then traded to the Jazz. So that whole era of his career was even a time of questioning on his own. Damn, can I come back from this? Another rehab? Fuck. So he comes back. The Timberwolves pick him up. And he has a good playoffs, about 14, 15 points a game, limited minutes. But he comes back, he shows life. So now people are like, let me give Derrick Rose a chance. So the Timberwolves re-signed him for a year. And he was the best Timberwolf that year. Town statistically, but when they needed a nigga to perform and get buckets and be clutch and be the catalyst for their team, be the leader of that team, Derrick Rose in 2019 was the leader of the Minnesota Timberwolves, averaging 18 and like 4 or 5 as a 6 man off limited minutes. Career high, 50 point game. So, you talk about a comeback story for the ages. Somebody off 2, 3 Achilles, I mean, ACL injuries, playing at a peak high performing level. Getting career numbers as far as shooting percentage, 3 point percentage. So, this year, should be noted and now we come to now he's on the pistons and we're going to see further on how this goes so that's his accolades that's its that's his career so far not to mention his style his gameplay that's the most athletic player i've ever seen in my life as far as jumping and running I've never seen anyone as fast as him that can jump as high as him. That's as strong as him. Shout out to Russell Westbrook, but you're not faster than Derrick Rose. You know that. You know you didn't jump higher than Derrick Rose. And you know you wasn't more skilled than Derrick Rose. So that compilation of player, Derrick Rose is an anomaly to where if you say Derrick Rose didn't make the Hall of Fame, it doesn't 
correlate with correspond with my way of thinking because that's one of the best players I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen a Derrick Rose before, and I never will again, I don't think. So, not only the accolades in his career, but just his style of play. You've never seen that. Stacey King would say, so Ferrari driving against Hyundai's, unguardable in his prime, and still unguardable today. <laughs> so, you have all of these aspects of the argument, then you have to compare it to what's the metric of, okay, what qualifies a Hall of Famer? You got Yao Ming. Shout out to Yao. But he played seven years. So if the injury narrative is the thing, Yao Ming's in the Hall of Fame after seven. Oh, he's from China and China doesn't play basketball. I get that argument. But so you're going to nullify somebody who had a more substantial career than Yao Ming because he's not from China? Somebody who has more notable moments than Yao Ming, but because he's not from China, he shouldn't go? Grant Hill. Love Grant Hill. But Grant Hill pre-injury didn't do what Derrick Rose did. Grant Hill post-injury didn't do what Derrick Rose did post-injury. So when you have these comparative measures, how is he not in the Hall of Fame? If it's just, oh, because he wasn't the old Derrick Rose, or his stats aren't that high, Grant Hill's stats ain't that high. Yao Ming's stats ain't that high. Steve Nash? If you were to ask me right now who's better, Steve Nash or Derrick Rose in their prime, I would never take Steve Nash. Shout out to Steve Nash, though, but then he has the two MVPs that levy him to some fans, but couldn't guard couldn't guard nobody. One of the worst defenders in history. Derrick Rose two-way player. So you just have to look and ask yourself, is Derrick Rose a Hall of Famer? That's my argument all around. I know they're going to taint his perception, so I think he might not get in. But if you're asking a nigga like me, who's judging based off the merit of your game, your hoops, and what you showed us, Derrick Rose is one of the best players to ever play this game. And to me, he's a first ballot Hall of Fame, and he's... He gives you perseverance. He gives you skill. He gives you the most athletic player you've ever seen. And how could that not be a Hall of Famer? That's my argument. It's your boy, Dan. Derrick Rose, you an MVP to me too, my nigga. Salute.